Maya Newell's documentary about young Aboriginal Tearaway Dewan has at its centre a most engaging child. He's 10 years old when the film begins. He's not good at concentrating in class, but he has a great sense of his own history and of himself. He's a bush kid who loves going back to his mother's homeland, some distance from the Alice, to connect with his healing powers inherited from his grandfather. His mother, Megan, is in despair over him. His maternal grandmother, Carol, is conscious of Duan's dilemma and makes the effort to connect him with his Aboriginal roots. Duan can't relate to white education and even when he's sent to a special Aboriginal school, he truants. He's in danger of being charged by the police of ending up in a foster home or in custody. The film examines the fragile path trodden by young Aboriginal kids who disengage from white culture and are drawn inescapably into their own heritage. It's an insightful film with some horrific statistics at its end, but young Dewan is actually irresistible. Yes, he is irresistible, and this is a pretty interesting film. In a way, it sort of comes over as a kind of almost didactive, polemical film with a sort of educational lesson at its centre, which is to do with education, that the education system at it, as it exists just doesn't really suit anybody. And probably the best scene in it is a scene with a, a teacher, a white teacher teaching a black, the black class, and she's trying to sort of talk about, uh, you know, great Aboriginal myths, and she sort of scoffs and uh, sort of mocks them somewhat. I thought that was extremely well, interesting. And you, you know, this is, this is Alice Springs. I mean, this is a, um, a, an Aboriginal settlement on the fringe of Alice Springs. And I thought it was interesting that these kids are on this hill overlooking, you know, nice. the white settlement in Alice and that divide between what white people have in this country and what Aboriginal people don't. And that divide is felt. And that yes. divide, I mean, he's got a very great sense of this being his country, mm. his country. And that, I, I think that's such a strength in this kid, uh, that consciousness of his heritage. Mm. And I, I, I think that there is that disengagement and I don't know that the film gives any answer no, as to what you can do. No, but, but it's edging towards analysis though, isn't it, because it, it's taking place against the Don Dale Detention Centre yeah. inquiry, which was absolutely, the situation there was absolutely horrific. And it shows us, it gives us a lot of archival footage as well of, yeah. of uh, Indigenous people in all sorts of really dire circumstances. I mean, it is quite polemical and quite yeah. political, I think, in what it's trying to achieve. And it's trying to point us as an audience to do further research in this, to become our own activists in a, in a way. Well, also, the fact that so many young Aboriginal kids are in jail, it's sort well, of it's like something this, like 100% in, in the Northern Territory. It's like of, disgusting. Of, and I think that what the film is saying, that something's got to give. These kids that fall out of this system, mm. that end up in custody or in foster homes, it's not the answer. No. Look, I'm going to give it four stars. I thought it was, I think it's really important. And I'll give it four as well. It's also beautifully filmed. Yeah. It looks absolutely gorgeous. What I want is a normal life of just being me. I just felt something, a memory. Maya, I'm interested in how you came to make this film. It's like an Indigenous film, and it, an Indigenous filmmaker, but it's not an Indigenous filmmaker, it's you. Yeah, I think it's a really good question. About a decade ago, I had the privilege to be invited by Aranda Elders to make films at, with this organisation called Akilera in Mbantua in Alice Springs. And we went out on country with town camp kids to their homelands and made beautiful films um, in collaboration with those elders um, about the empowering work that they were doing um, behind the scenes to um, support their kids in language and identity and culture. And then I realised that there were so many children like Duan in the film who were traditional healers who spelt, you know, spoke one or two or three Indigenous languages who were so confident on their homeland and in their first culture, but they went to school and they were treated as failures at school. And there was a story that just kept repeating itself. And then I met Duan, and he was just the most exuberant, you know, intelligent, witty, gorgeous young person who really wanted to be in a film. <laughs> 
Um, and I suppose it fell into place, but I get your, your point because, you know, First Nations people have had their stories misappropriated and misrepresented for centuries in this country. And so what we did to make sure that this film was not one of those stories is we set this structure of creative control around In My Blood It Runs. So, you know, obviously the core creative team, there's Larissa Berendt and Rachel Edwardson, who are both First Nations people. Um, those in the film, so Duane himself and all his grandmothers, are the core partners. So they weren't, it wasn't just at the end that they watched the film and went, yep, is that okay? From early messaging stage, before we even started filming, we were having consultation workshops about what is the most important story that needs to be told here and how should we do it? And what are the stereotypes around First Nations families that we need to avoid? And then they were watching rushes and edits and rough cuts. And it was really a, um, yeah, a beautiful collaborative process. Tell me, what are the important things that you look for in the films that you want to make? I've in the past made films that are observational in style and they take years to film. So it needs to be something that I care about deeply. And my first film, Gaby Baby, which was about children being raised in same-sex families, was my story, because I've got two lesbian mums. So that felt, um, also, you know, Australia was in the midst of, um, you know, a debate about marriage equality and whether my parents could be allowed to marry. So sitting with young 10-year-old, 11-year-old uh, children through that fight and filming that film um, was a beautiful process, because it was also learning something um, that I was investigating myself, but it was something that I deeply cared about. Um, and I think when I finished making that film, I thought, you know, the way that we treat First Nations people in this country is appalling. And I couldn't think of something more important at that time. They don't know their culture. They don't teach them their culture. Duane ran away from school today at about 1.30. Do you want to get locked up with those other kids? This is your last chance. 